Hello there and welcome back to another episode of TA with McKay. My name is McKay. We've got a bit to talk about today, so we're not going to waste any time. I want to kind of go over a few things and then let everybody get back to enjoying the beginning of their weekend. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the price of oil and how that's somewhat, at least recently, inversely correlated with, you know, stocks. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Bitcoin price, um, you know, kind of the pullback that we saw coming, at least from a statistical standpoint, a few days ago that we spoke about. And then we're going to give an update on the Binance short position that I opened up a few days ago as well that I spoke about in the video, which is the BNB token. And if all of that sounds interesting to you, please remember to like and subscribe and let's go. It's T.A. with M.K. It's T.A. with M.K. All right, so real quick before we move on to the Bitcoin price, price of oil, you know, and a few other things, I just want to quickly give an update on the SPX as it just closed about uh, 10, 15 minutes ago, my time here in the US. And this is just a chart that I, I mentioned a few of these things in my video two days ago, but this is a chart I posted yesterday in my group. This is before the pullback actually began, but I was just kind of building what I would call a bearish case, you know, reasons to believe that the SPX or S&P 500 was maybe a little tired, was likely to struggle breaking through its resistance that it was at, and, you know, by association, Bitcoin, of course, would then, not by association, but because it's so highly correlated, then, you know, Bitcoin was going to likely pull back as well. But I was using this to kind of front run the ideas of Bitcoin pulling back. And these were the seven reasons that I posted on my chart. I'm going to read them to you real quick. Number one, the 200 SMA, which is this yellow 200 moving average, was resistance. You can see it wicked up perfectly. Number two, you had this potential trend line of resistance. You know, this is kind of my channels I have drawn that are, you know, I guess... Um, like this large falling wedge. You had one touch up here, one touch here. It didn't quite reach up to there, but you know, you had that just overhead. Number three, you had this major area of horizontal price level resistance. Now my screenshot of this um, money flow index is in the way, but back here, it, it acted as support once, support here, resistance twice along here. And that was the area that we were, you know, that we were flirting with, which was this red box. Number four, you had a lot, you have a lot of VRVP resistances. This is just visible profile range. It's just showing you, areas where there's a lot of buyers and sellers or there have been a lot of buyers and sellers in the past the further this sticks out those are considered high volume nodes um, these areas where it's not sticking out or these little crevices these are known as low volume nodes and so anytime you're approaching on these major time frames these higher volume nodes it just shows you there's a lot of buyers and sellers in that area there was previously and since you know it's resistance at this case then that just means there's probably going to be a lot of sellers now this wasn't didn't stick out quite as far as back down here when we had to break through the 4100 ish area but you know everything just gets you know bigger as you go up basically than we what we've tackled so far and so that was number four number five is the stock rsi this is the stochastic was in the overextended or overbought as they say area was starting to turn down the money flow index which is another indicator i use uh, was also reaching the overbought or overextended areas, starting to turn down, and the MACD was overextended and losing positive momentum. So you have these seven different reasons coming together to suggest at least a, somewhat of a short-term pullback. We won't know if that's going to turn into a mid or longer-term pullback until we kind of see how the market reacts when it reopens on Monday. But I just want to give that quick update as to kind of why or what my thinking was going into yesterday, even before Bitcoin started to pull back. All right, and then just a quick update on the Bitcoin daily chart. This is another one that I posted in my Telegram group yesterday, and I was just telling them about some FIB confluence that I had found as far as this major swing high with about 48k down to our low and then the swing within the swing which was about 32.5 down to the low and i came up with these two different sets of fib levels based on each individual swing and more or less where we had got rejected four days in a row and ultimately started to roll over was the 0 0.5 fib level which is a very common one for the swing within the swing which was just this swing high here down to this low, right, that swing. And then the fibs on the right here, which the 236 was where it was being rejected, is the swing up here, clear down to here, right? That's how I came up with both of these sets of fibs. Um, it's very common, you know, for stocks to bounce or be rejected at fibs. Uh, if price action's going up, you know, you use the fib tool to, to figure out what's an area, if it starts to retrace, might be where you see a bounce. So a lot of times the 0 0.5, which is 50% of the move, is a, is a common area to see that type of a bounce. You know, goes up a certain amount and then retraces half of that move, right? Well, same thing happens when it's going down. Sometimes you get the little pumps back up and those will end up being, you know, 50%. So in this case, this swing high down to this low or just this price action swing 
this was the 0.5 fib level for that swing and for this larger one that was the 236 and those both came together acting as resistance bitcoin rolled over and as far as a measured move because it also looks to have broken down out of the rising channel or what some people would call a bear flag to the downside and, I, and what i usually do in these is i don't trade the actual flag part i know that would probably give us a, a target clear back down to like nine thousand. Could that happen over time? For sure it could, but I don't expect that, even if it does happen, to not happen without some you know, pretty significant bounces along the way. So we won't even entertain that idea just yet. But as far as something to keep in mind that I'll be watching, you know, especially as stocks open again next week, if they continue to retrace, where would, where would I expect Bitcoin to bounce? The conservative measured move is around 19,600 and the aggressive or lower target, should it push a little bit lower, would be about 18,005 or 600. So keep those levels in mind. Also keep in mind that should price action do that, that it wouldn't be the end all be all because that would ultimately still just be a high and a higher, or sorry, a low and a higher low, which wouldn't be bad. At which point, as it swung back up, you would just be looking for price action from that point to put in a higher high than this 25,000 level that we reached last time. So these are just some things to keep an eye on over the coming days and weeks. The next idea I wanted to briefly discuss is just the price of oil versus the price of Bitcoin and how they seem to at least recently be inversely correlated. You can see here that from December 2nd, when oil found itself a local bottom and then pumped between that and I wanna say, what is this date here? Uh, March 9th. If you go look at that same time frame for Bitcoin, that was this pullback from around 60k, clear down to you know around uh, 32k, and then the most recent, uh, same thing. You know the most recent bottom again, where after that rolled over and went down, kind of found a bottom down in this zone one, two, three times. But the last time it tested that zone and then went up, that was between April 25th and June 14th before it peaked. You look at Bitcoin's price there as well. And it was sitting at about 40,500, 40,600, and retraced about 46% ish down to around 21,500. Now, it, it kind of makes sense. You know, this is just inflation and you know, stuff like that. But whenever the price of oil seems to go up, that tends to be bad for, for um, stocks, or in this case, Bitcoin, right? which follow stocks. Now, the reason why I brought that up is because if you look at oil right now, it's at support. Now, the hopium, and this is actually the logarithmic chart, but the hopium is that you kind of had this trend line that dated back clear to um, October of 2020, that it bounced there, bounced there, and kind of there again. Well, it broke down from that and bearishly retested the underside of it, as well as it lost these 200 EMA and SMA on the uh, daily chart. Um, and now they're act they also retested those as resistance. If we kind of zoom in and look at that. That being said, in the past, whenever it's lost the 200, you know, it, it, it's usually gained it right back. You can see that it did it there. It also did it down here a few different times where it lost it, lost it. So it doesn't seem like on the price of oil that the 200, you know, SMAs and EMAs act as very strong support or resistance. So I don't know that we can take too much from that. Um, the trend line may be a little more than the actual EMAs, but I just wanted to point them out real quick. But what we're kind of tracking right now is this little falling wedge. Now it is near support or it's basically at support. Uh, I don't know that you would call it super, super strong support per se, but you can see that it acted as resistance back here, you know, basically twice within a few months or a few uh, weeks period. And then it broke back above and kind of retested this zone as support before pushing higher to, you know, to the, to the recent high from back in early March. And we're at that zone again, or that area, right? So just something to keep an eye on because in general, at least for the last couple of times that oil has had a, a run to the upside, that has been bad for you know stocks and, or, and Bitcoin especially. So we'll keep an eye on that. If this were to break out of this wedge and flip this area right back here that was support, support, as support again, I would imagine we'll see a much deeper retrace out of stocks and Bitcoin as this trends higher. And we'll just have to keep an eye on it at that point to see how high it likely will go. Um, but on the, I guess the hopium side of it is maybe this breaks and loses this support and starts trending this way. And, you know, because they seem to be inversely correlated, that would be, you know, a positive, of course, for stocks and Bitcoin. So just an idea I wanted to bring up something we'll track over the, also over the next coming, you know, days and weeks. And then just to finish off today's video, I want to quickly talk about the BNB chart, which is the Binance. This is just a coin that I mentioned from a few days ago that was a short 
um, position that I, I actually opened a leverage short position on KuCoin, and it was one that I was looking to possibly, you know, midterm hold if if their stocks and Bitcoin were to see a little bit of a deeper retrace that were to happen over the next week or two. This was something I was looking to actually get into and hold for a bit, just a very low leveraged position. And so I just wanted to kind of give an update on that, which I will post an update to that position on the screen. Then I also want to just kind of talk about my game plan with it, you know, going forward as we watch and see what Bitcoin does. Now I posted in my Telegram group, which I'll show you a screenshot of that as well, that my original plan, which I have now, you know, stuck with, was if we were to hit my first target, which is around the 280 area, in fact, 290 is what it really should have been, but 280 is what I posted about, which we did hit. We wicked as low as a 276, 277, that I would move my stop loss at that point to break even, which right now it is at break even. So at this point, it's impossible for me to lose money on this trade, which is a good thing. Now, the next thing that I would be looking at as far as targets, which I have on this screen here would be down here at about 265 and then if that were to break back down here at about 245 250 which ultimately would just be a retest of this giant uh you know trend line that it broke out of i know it did break out and retest here but it's not uncommon on a, on a trend line that dates back as far as this did at least clear back to november of last year for it to retest it again so i wouldn't necessarily look for it to lose that level I and mean, that's obviously a level that has previously been you know resistance here acted as support here i would expect you know some sort of a major bounce at that area which would probably be in correlation with bitcoin at the time having a bounce of course but as far as you know those are the targets i'm eyeing and if we were to hit this next target at about 265 at that point i would be moving my stop loss into profits move it somewhere down here at about 290 at that point and i also want to just point out that if you're not in this you know trade but with something you were enter entertaining the idea of then the four hours what i'm actually using to kind of you know tell the, you know, the members of my Telegram group, at least, that aren't in the trade of how they could potentially still enter it. And this is this is why. So on the, on the four hour, you have the 200 EMA and SMA that it actually lost. It, and it's also, they're also coming into confluence right here with this previous area of support. Um, well, resistance back here. And it's, it's just on, on the daily chart, it's a, very, it's a very important level at about 290. Now, if we come back up and bearish retest at around 290, maybe 295, which would actually be a bearish retest of these moving averages and this area of resistance, at that point, that would be another good area for me to add to my position and for anyone else that's entertaining the idea of opening the position to open it there. If you open it, and if you were to open it there and that were to fill, your stop loss at that point to, 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 to begin with would make sense to go back up here above this wick here and above some of these moving averages, just in case it does break through and retest some of those, you know, bearishly. So you'd want to put it back up here at about 315 initially, which would be, you know, exposing you potentially to about a uh six or seven percent loss you know if it were to hit um if you're using leverage depending on your you know the leverage amount you're using that could be exposing you to more than that but at any rate just as far as if it was just a 1x you know short position that's six percent potential loss to that side but the way that i'd play that then is if that filled as soon as you hit this area at about 265 you would move your stop loss to break even no chance to lose money at that point and then as I've spoke about in previous videos, this is, this is my, at least my strategy, is if that area got lost and it went down to this next area, about 245, 250, as soon as it hit that, I'd put my stop loss back just above the previous zone of support, or in this case would be now resistance, at about 270, 275. And you just take it level by level at that point. But you always wanna make sure you're moving your stop loss up as you go along, just to guarantee first that you're you know not gonna lose any money and that you break even. And then after that, that you're locking in profits essentially or making sure that if your stop loss is hit it's hit in profits so i'll keep you guys updated on twitter as well as probably the next day or two in, in some future videos but that is the update on bnb thank you so much for sticking around to this point i hope nobody got too wrecked over the past 24 hours with what's happened with the bitcoin price and then obviously um the price of altcoins um, and if you did get wrecked, just remember there's always a lesson to be learned in everything in life. Um, sometimes you do have to get wrecked in this case, you know, to learn a valuable lesson that can help you going forward. I know that sounds like something your grandma would say, but hey, grandma is wise. Hope everybody has a good weekend. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, please remember to like and subscribe. We'll catch you tomorrow. It's tea.